Okay, there's him, uh, Pelly's at them. Let's have a chat. What a dramatic introduction, Jake. I Welcome to the channel. Today's video is a quick recap of the race that I ran, the 20 Kilometer de Paris. But it might also serve as a bit of encouragement and guidance if you are a runner having those inevitable runner's woes. But wait, Jake, what were the results of the race? Well, you could just watch the video today and see. Or I could just tell you right now. I ran 74 minutes for 20 kilometers, and I got 89th place out of 26,000. And if you're wondering where I've been the last month, I've got quite a tale to tell. Yes, this is a picture of Paris. No, I am not in Paris right now. I might be in another part of Europe. I might be in Africa. I don't know. I promise I will divulge everything in the next video. But until then, enjoy. Real quick, I'm gonna talk about this in three aspects. One, as an athlete, two, as a runner, Three, as a coach or your running YouTube guru guy. One, as a runner, I'm pissed. The weather was so hot, it was 19 degrees Celsius in the shade. I was just talking with a really nice guy and he said two of the top male runners and one of the top female runners, we're talking like the elites, dropped out. I didn't, I didn't film this one on camera, but there was a guy on the floor sprawled out with ice on his chest. They train at altitude, so their blood's really thick, and so if they come down and it's hot or humid and they sweat too much, it's... As a runner, I'm pissed because my time was not my goal time! I ran 74-something, and I wanted to run 69-something. Check this out. The race packet, the finisher packet, it has a Madeline in it. <laughs> Love it. Two, as an athlete. As an athlete, I'm happy and proud of that. I paid attention to my body. I ran my own race. I listened to external forces. I listened to internal forces. I assessed the conditions. I assessed other athletes. I ran even splits in the beginning. I didn't push myself. I didn't get down on myself when I felt like... And because of that, the latter half of my race, I ran faster. I ran negative splits. I passed a lot of people. And I challenged myself and I pushed myself as an athlete. And I ran a good, solid race. I'm genuinely not happy with my time. It's, it, it is upsetting because my tempo pace is faster. Like, my training pace is faster but the conditions were there. So as a runner and as an athlete, it's always hot. There's always another race, right, right, right? We talked about it. And three, as your running coach, your races are not always gonna go as expected. All you can do is prepare your best. What happens on race day, whatever happens, happens. Murphy's Law, expect the unexpected. Just give your best. Yes, I'm looking at you, I'm telling you now, it sucks to run what you feel is below your potential. I understand that as a coach. I also understand it personally. There will always be another race in the future and the beautiful thing about running is that if you pursue it patiently and give it time and give it the love and attention it deserves, you don't force anything, you can you can do this sport, you can be a runner for a long time. For me, there are many beautiful things about running. Racing is one amazing, beautiful aspect of it. It's not the only aspect. So if you run a good race, you run a bad race, that's awesome. You should enjoy it, you should learn from it, take any failure, Convert it into a success. What did you learn from it today? Today I learned maybe I should try and pick races that are in cooler temperatures so that I can run times that I feel like I'm capable of running. So I just did a five minute cool down and I'm gonna stretch uh, because, oh my God, if I don't stretch my muscles right now, I may literally die. If I don't get something to eat, I'm literally going to die. Could my training have been different? Hmm, you know, it's tough to say because I feel like possible with the weather effect that it could be 20 seconds per mile slower. I'll have to check when I get home. I'll put a little info thing right here. So since I ran a steady pace throughout the race and my last two, three miles was pretty quick, like it wasn't, I was able to, to book it the last three. That would tell me that I need to do more kind of at the top end aerobic range, more tempo pace, so that the first half of my race, I was kind of running faster, basically. So I finished fast, which means that probably VO2 stuff was good, turnover was good, it felt decent, um, but the, just the first half of the race, if you're doing like half marathon. So I can think about it as a coach, you guys, everything was cool with my shoes, my gear, a little camera fit in a little pie, little pocket right here. Boop, boop, boop. My personal, I don't know, like my personal, my personal feelings on the race. I don't want to say, I don't, I don't want to say like my first race in a year. I don't want to say like I'm embarrassed because that's not, that's not fair to myself. I think, but I know that I can run faster, and I want to do that. You know what I mean? I think, I think you guys understand. 
Um, the course, the people here, everyone was fantastic. Everyone was like so nice. God, uh, French people are fantastic. You guys are phenomenal. Thank you so much. Oh, put the Eiffel Tower. Thank you so much for for having me in your beautiful city, letting me race here. It's been a fantastic experience. And I, and if during the race, if it, if it came across like I was being rude or like condescending or something, absolutely not. I think you guys know, like when you're in the race, it's like. It gets, you know, so congratulations to everyone who ran today. If you ran the 20 km de Paris, uh, congrats, felicitations. And um, if you guys live in Paris, if you're French, si vous êtes français, quand vous me regardez, like, quand je, quand je courir, uh, please, s'il vous plaît, uh, s'il vous plaît, it's like, say hi, say hi. So if you guys see me when you're running, come say hi. Um, I'd love to talk. If you guys followed along for the week, thank you so much. And uh, I'll let you know where I'm going next, where I'm going to be racing next. I'll give you a hint. It's French speaking. But it might be a little more south. I just want to say, French people are absolutely amazing and extremely kind-hearted and nice. I just had somebody come up to me after the race and was like, oh my god, you, he's like, you ran well, you started slower, and then you got faster, and his name's Patrick. Patrick, you're super nice to meet you. Totally ran in person, extremely kind of him. All of my friends that I made here in the city are absolutely amazing, especially the Parisians. Everyone, tout le monde, c'était très cool de te rencontrer, uh, c'est fantastique. Uh, and so specifically, if you are an American, you have this weird idea that French people um, like might be rude or something, please get that out of your head. And I want to teach you guys three things to say that will forever change your interactions with French people hitherto. Ready? Bonjour madame, bonjour monsieur, excusez-moi. Super simple. It's extremely important to say hello, ma'am, sir, excuse me. And then do your whole spiel. If you have to use English, I would say just try to try to learn the French words. Why not? If you're gonna be here, if you're only gonna be here for a week or something, go figure. Speaking in someone's native language in their native country would have a positive effect on them. I would. I would have no idea. Okay, just wanted to. Ça a été aussi la salle, l'Assemblée de Noël, en relève.